So how do you get started with a home lab? So what's a home lab? Well, a home lab, if you think about it from a scientific perspective, a lab is a place where there's a whole bunch of scientists playing around with stuff, making discoveries and learning as they go along. Well, a home lab is like a computer lab. You know, if you work in a company, a company has a whole bunch of server racks and networking equipment all inside of these cabinets scattered across different offices. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in there like servers, switches, routers, there's firewalls, there's all of these devices on there. And sometimes you don't get the ability to be able to play around with this stuff in a workplace environment. So home labs are great for your own learning because you can build an environment at home to be able to do your own learning. Now, the other great thing about a home lab is it doesn't have to be just a lab for your own learning. You can actually take advantage of a home lab to share those resources with perhaps in a home with other devices on your home network. You know, like what I love to do, I love to have what's called the domain controller. Domain controller is something that is using something called Active Directory. And I like to manage all of my Active Directory users and accounts and everything all within my own home lab environment. I use it for a bit of security, for file permissions, you know, what people can and can't access, all of that sort of stuff. And I've got all that set up as a virtual machine, a VM on a environment called VMware's ESXi. And that's running on a piece of physical tech, a physical computer running this hypervisor called ESXi. And then the VM is a domain controller VM and it does what I need it to do. I'm Emilio, I love tech, hopefully you do too. And look, because this is the YouTube machine, you need to do the subscription button. Click on that button. You don't wanna miss out on any of our awesome videos. Before you even get started with a home lobby, have a think about, go back, have a sit down, grab a pen and paper or an iPad. I mean, cause we're in a digital age. Have a think about what you want from a home lab. What do you actually want to learn? What is the purpose? Without you really understanding what the purpose of the home lab is for, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to really have a think about and design the home lab and what you actually wanna get out of it. So what we're gonna be focusing on this video is how to get started using a whole bunch of old PCs. I love VMware's ESXi. I think it's one of the best virtualization platforms out there. Now there are others, right? Citrix does its own thing. Microsoft does its own thing with Hyper-V. I personally love VMware's ESXi the best. I find that it's great. You can download VMware's ESXi completely for free off the VMware website and use it forever for free in a non-commercial environment. Now, if you're gonna be doing this in a business, then you probably wanna go and register it and things like that. But in a home environment, you can build as many physical computers, converting them into virtualization servers using VMware's ESXi. And that's what we're gonna be doing here. As long as you've got some sort of internet connection, that's a good thing. As long as you've got some sort of a switch, maybe it's on the back of your router or your modem, you've got some network points, that's great because you can actually run computers into there. Maybe if your computers have got Wi-Fi, that's good as well. But generally for an ESXi server, you want to actually have them physically plugged in with an ethernet cable. All right, here are my computers. Now, of course you can do this on a laptop. That's not a problem, but we are doing this on a desktop computers that are no longer used. We've got some Dell ones, you've got a Lenovo uh, and HP. And these are great. They served me really, really well at some point. They were running Windows. I think I'm pretty sure I had Linux running onto them as well. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually remove all the data on there you're gonna wipe all that data and then you'll go and run the VMware software onto it. So once you're happy with wiping all of these puppies away, what you're gonna to need to do is you need to go and download VMware's ESXi. Version 8 is the current one as of this video, but there are also versions, version 7, there's version 6.7, 6 6.5, 6, et cetera, and they all sort of go backwards. Now, one thing you need to consider is, first thing, some of these older computers may not be able to actually run newer versions of VMware's ESXi version eight. Some of them will, some of them will not. So just keep that in mind. So maybe what you can do is you can go and download different versions. Go and download the version of ESXi eight, version seven, version six, seven, version six, five, version six, perhaps, just so that you're ensuring that you're sort of covering all the bases. Now, the other thing that you need to make sure is that the computer itself has virtualization technology built into it. This is more part of the CPU. So Intel and AMD, making sure that the processor inside is compatible and enables you, allows you to enable virtualization technology onto it so that you can actually build your physical computers 
as a hypervisor, as an ESXi hypervisor, because you're removing the operating system and you're installing VMware's ESXi operating system onto it. So you need to make sure that that is there first, because if your computer does not support that, you won't be able to install VMware's ESXi onto it. So just keep that in mind. Oh, and there's one more thing. The parts inside of your computer, they're not server grade, right? Because they are desktops. So some of the drivers, right? You know, when you're loading Windows, you're actually installing drivers for your graphics card, for your sound card, for all of those sort of things. Very similar with VMware ESXi. The VMware ESXi installation file that you're gonna be downloading has a whole bunch of known drivers available to it that will be installed and deployed against that computer. So if your computer has maybe some custom bits, you've gone and opened it up and put in your own bits and pieces, you may actually run into trouble when you're actually trying to install ESXi. It may actually say that there's a driver missing or it's been unable to find something. You can generally fix some of that stuff by customizing the ESXi installation uh, file. It can get a little bit tricky doing that, so I probably don't recommend doing that anyway. But the other thing you can do is if you've got a Dell, so you see that over here, I've got a Dell computer. You can also go to the Dell website and you can actually download a Dell customized copy of ESXi. So perhaps the VMware version of ESXi out of the VMware website doesn't have the Dell drivers and I've actually customized that with a whole bunch of Dell drivers. Once you've got that ESXi, you now need to go and get that onto a USB stick. And of course you need to make sure that your computer can actually boot from USB sticks, because if you're gonna try this on a very, very old computer, you may run into problems. So making sure that on the BIOS side of things, you can actually get that uh, USB bootable on so that you can actually boot from that ESXi USB stick. We'll then use some software. I love this software. Again, it's completely for free. Download Rufus, R-U-F-U-S, completely for free. It lets you actually create bootable media onto a USB stick. You now need to go and stick that onto the front, onto the side, onto the back of the computer and actually power it on and boot from that USB stick and then follow the prompts to get ESXi installed. And if all things have worked correctly, when you power on your computer, you should actually be presented with the loading screen of ESXi. If you're not seeing this, it means that the bootable media didn't work. It means that whatever happened, maybe the ISO is corrupted, maybe the USB stick isn't bootable. Maybe the computer cannot recognize the USB media itself. You're gonna have to go and troubleshoot that yourself, get that working. You're then just gonna follow the standard prompts to get ESXi installed. And you need to go and follow this process and duplicate, copy this process on every computer that you've got. Because every single computer that you've got, you now want to load ESXi onto them. Of course, during this process, you've gone and you've selected the IP address that you're wanting to allocate to each individual ESXi host. And once everything's done and you already know what the IP addresses are of every single one of your computers, open up a web browser. Now the cool thing is you can do this from your phone, from an iPad, from another computer, Windows, a Mac, a Linux, and you go to the IP address of each individual ESXi host. And then you're gonna put in the root credentials that you set up during the installation. And now within the vSphere client, you're presented with your ESXi host. You can see the specs of your host. Here is all of the details of your ESXi host. Absolutely brilliant. You can actually see the vendor, the make, the model. You can see how much RAM, how much CPU. You can see how much storage is all available on your ESXi host. And now comes the fun part, where you actually start to install your own VMs. You actually build your VMs. Now, what you're gonna need here is of course you need a pool of VMs. You need to get yourself maybe Windows, Linux, other operating systems. You go to the website of each of these vendors. You can go and download Linux Ubuntu or Linux CentOS or Red Hat, whatever the operating system is. You go and download that onto your computer and then you're gonna go and build a VM. Maybe it's a Linux VM. You wanna go and build a Linux VM. You then just go and create a VM. You give it a relevant name, and here are the specs of it. You can actually go and customize the specs, give it a certain amount of RAM, a certain amount of CPU. You then go and point it to the ISO that was just downloaded. Let's say it's uh, CentOS. Here we go, we're gonna go and navigate to CentOS. We can actually select it, and here it is presented on our list to be able to install CentOS VM. And then we're good to go. 
Now the template, the, the shell has now been created, power it on. You then go and console into that VM and then you're presented with essentially with a window. You then follow the standard prompts to actually get your CentOS installed. You will then follow the same process for any other operating system that you're gonna to wanna to go and set up and deploy. So if it's Windows, you're gonna follow the Windows prompts. And then once the installation is done, you can then log in to your fully fledged VM, your now virtual machine, your server, your client, whatever it is, which is now running on ESXi, running on that physical computer. And you can build as many VMs as you want, keeping in mind that of course, each of these VMs you're gonna be allocating a certain amount of RAM, a certain amount of CPU, a certain amount of hard drive space. So all of these resources are going to need to be shared amongst all of your VMs. Because if you've got a very slow old computer, you maybe, maybe could only run maybe two or three VMs at once. If you've got something that is pretty powerful, you can maybe run 10 all at once. So if you don't have all the resources, that's fine because if you've got a whole bunch of old computers like I do right here, I can actually go and build VMs on each individual one because each one of these computers are now running as an ESXi host so I can build VMs and spread them across. So they're my stack of computers now running ESXi. Hey, Home Labs, if you wanna know more about Home Labs, why don't you check out a link down below we go into a lot more detail. We show you even bigger home labs in a rack environment, in a server rack, and some of the gear that I've got, and giving you some more tips and techniques that you can be putting into place as you continue to build your home lab more and more. And that's it. Hey, thanks for checking this out. Stay tuned for the next video where we talk about all things tech.